following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The metempsychosis, metempsychosis of the Bodhisattva, metempsychosis from meta, change, M from in, and psyche, soul. In other words, the process of reincarnation or incarnation of the Neuma, Gebura, and Hesed by means of the process of denial within the Bodhicitta. Hasmalim, enlighten me with the splendors of Elohim and Shekinah. This is a prayer recited in the invocation of Solomon when the priest, which represents, represents uh, Hesed, is invoking all of the powers of the different worlds of the tree of life which are, of course, related with Asia, Yetzirah, uh, Bria, and Asiluth. So, we are arriving with a sequence of these lectures to the Sephirah Hesed. which is related with the spirit, the individual spirit of each one of us. He said, uh, is translated at mercy or charity, but also has uh, another name, which is Gedula. And this uh, Gedula means love, also goodness. So when you refer to goodness or love, we said Gedula. And Hesed, which is mercy. <coughs> Both names attributed to Hesed or to the Sephira number four in the tree of life which is on the top of the seven lower sephiroths, as you see, counting from the bottom, Malkut, Yesod, Hod, Nezah, Tiferet, Geburah, and Hesed. These are the seven lower sephiroths that we always state are related with a true human being. The being that has to develop within 
the seven uh, bodies in order to be called a sayer, sayer and pin. So, Malkut is indeed the opposite of Hesed. So, it is between Hesed and Malkut that you find all the Sephiroth related with the work that we are talking in different lectures. So, the triune spirit, or the neuma, that we call in Greek, the monad, is a trio of Hesed, Gebura, and Tiferet. In other words, spirit, divine soul, and human soul. These three aspects is what we call the monad, or the neuma. And the opposite, of course, are below, in Malkut, related with the three brains. Remember that we always state that we have three brains. The central nervous system, the grand sympathetic nervous system, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which we call always intellectual brain, emotional brain, and motor instinctual sexual brain. So, through those brains is how the bodhicitta act through. Remember that uh, we always state that the bodhicitta has to build the inner bodies or what we call the vessels because Malkut, the physical body that we have stated in other lectures, is uh, symbolic, symbolically called the carcass. It's really a vessel. But this vessel uh, have within, in any ordinary person, the protoplasmic bodies that many times we stated are lunar, mechanical, negative. And uh, that's why Malkut is called Asia, which is the world of matter in action. But of course, the initiate, <coughs> the Kabbalist, has to build inside the superior vessels that we always state is related with that uh, uh, statement given by the Master Jesus to Nicodemus. You have to be born again if you want to enter in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, we have to build superior vessels because the neuma, the spirit, which is the monad, cannot incarnate, cannot reincarnate as well, if the Kabbalists do not have those vessels. Behold here that I'm uh, uh, uttering the word Kabbalist, because this word comes from the Hebrew language, Kabel which means to receive. And this is precisely what an initiate is, which walks on the direct path, on the path of the civilization, a Kabbalist, meaning someone that receives, someone that has a vessel, and that receives the neuma, and also the psyche in different process. 
Because that is precisely the goal of the initiate. To incarnate or to reincarnate their soul and their spirit. Or we say in Greek terms, their psyche and their pneuma. So, from that point of view, we can see that in Malkut, there are two types of Kabbalists. This is very important to understand. When I say there are two types of Kabbalists, let us uh, comprehend that we are talking from the alchemical point of view. Because alchemy is precisely the science in order to transform energies within the body, which is called in the tree of life, Da'at, the mystery of Da'at. So, that's why Malkut is called the Mesocosmos, or the cosmos in the middle. Because, as you see, it's between Klippoth and the Kingdom of Heaven, related with the superior Sephiroth above it. So, Malkut itself, as I repeat, is the physical body that we have, the carcass. And within it, everybody has the protoplasmic bodies, that that we call ego. That uh, is a patrimony of any beast of the kingdom. And you investigate clairvoyantly any cat, any dog, any horse, any bull, they have the protoplasmic bodies as we have them. And those uh, vessels, because they are vessels, this is precisely what we have to understand. They are vessels created by nature for its own purpose, which are, or which is mechanical in order to transform energies during the process of evolution from the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, and animal kingdom. But also nature needs other uh, forces which are called lunar forces. And uh, nature uses the same protoplasmic bodies in devolution, which are the vessels that attract the lunar forces which are directly related with clipoth. So, when you learn uh, Kabbalah, when you study Kabbalah, you discover that within you, you have your own spirit, your own chesed, or your own, your own gedulah, which is an emanation of that as you find here, there is between Bina and Da'at, the ray of creation in its dissension. From Bina passes through Da'at into Hesed. It is very important to understand that because uh, in many lectures before we explained that the innermost, the spirit that we have, is the child of the Holy Spirit the seventh body above, the tap. And uh, he said, indeed, uh, Kabbalistically speaking, is the son or the child of Jehovah Elohim, which is related with the Sefira Bina. That, that, that's why the Bible states that uh, Jehovah Elohim which is the Holy Spirit, uh, made all the creation through Chesed, which is precisely that element that is placed within our own particular individuality. 
So that he said is that which the Bible calls the Ruach Elohim. You see, and it's translated as the Spirit of God. We will say the Spirit of the Elohim that in the beginning was hovering upon the face of the waters. So, this Ruach Elohim, I repeat, is our innermost. But, that innermost has to develop, has to create soul, because he is a spirit in itself, and he has to grow. And that's why when you investigate the Chesed of all the creatures that exist in nature, not all of those Chesed are fully developed. That development starts when we begin uh, to work with the waters, as is stated in the book of Genesis. Our own particular chesed start building all the book of Genesis within. And this is how Kabbalistically you find, that's why when the Genesis states, in Jehovah Elohim, <coughs> or, or Elohim, which is a symbol of the gods, said, let there be light. And there was light. And the light was good. Hmm? So translated into plain English, Kabbalistically, in, alchemically speaking, we will say that he said, or that Ruach Elohim, that is spirit that the Elohim put in our interior in the beginning, through the alchemy that we are teaching, to the mysteries of that. The transmutation says, let there be light. So the Elohim, which in this case symbolizes the Divine Mother with the Holy Spirit, which in different lectures we explain the Divine Mother is called Shekinah in Kabbalah. And the Holy Spirit is Binah. The union of those two forces, feminine and masculine, uh, work in Malkut which is the carcass, from the very bottom, and make their work, listen very careful, Ava and Aima, father and mother in heaven, made their work through Chesed. That's why it says that in the beginning, the spirit of those Elohim were floating upon the face of the waters. Those waters, as we repeat, are the sexual waters. And from there, from that transmutation that we explain, emerges the light. So that light, of course, is the light that rises in the spinal column, which is the outcome of the Zalem. Again, that Zalem is the same Chesed, which, is, which has the image of the Elohim within, because indeed, Chesed is the image of the Elohim. Or is that spirit made into the image of the creators of God as we speak. So when that spirit is delivered through the sexual transmutation, that Salem, that Ruach Elohim, that Chesed starts making light within us or within his vessel, which is the beginning is Malkut. This is how we receive, you see? This is, why, this is what is called white tantrism. To receive the spirit of Chesed in order to start the work. And when you read that that light was good, it means that light was Gedula, which is goodness. This is precisely what many people do not understand when they read the Bible. They, only, uh, they are only bottled up within the terms good and evil. But that good and evil, or those terms, has nothing to do with what we're talking here. Gedula is the goodness. 
is that precisely that we start building. Because to build that goodness in its totality is to perform all the days of Genesis. So in the beginning we awake that light, Kundalini, what is called the serpent of bronze, that uh, Moses talked about, that was healing the Israelites in the wilderness, which is the Kundalini, which is the fire of the Holy Spirit. That fire of the Holy Spirit is precisely that Gedula, <coughs> the son of the Divine Mother. And that is Shekinah. There are two types of Shekinah, according to Kabbalah. Shekinah is that feminine aspect of Binah that creates. So, the Shekinah above is the Divine Mother, the wife of the Holy Spirit, which is an emanation of Chokmah. You see, that's why when we, or when Dante Alighieri talks about the Divine Mother Kundalini, he states in the Divine Comedy in Paradise, Canto 33, verse 137. Virgin Mother, daughter of your son, more humble and sublime than any creature, Fixed goal decreed from all eternity. Your loving kindness does not only answer the one who asks, but it is often ready to answer freely long before the asking. In you, compassion is. In you is pity. In you is generosity. In you is every goodness found in any creature. So this Divine Mother is what we call in Kabbalah Shekinah. The wife of the Holy Spirit. The son, I mean the daughter of his son. And it's, be and it's because Chokmah is a father. Chokmah is the father of Binah. When you study the ray of creation, you see how the ray of creation descends from Keter, then to Chokmah, then to Binah, and then passes through Da'at into Hesed. So therefore, Binah is the outcome of Chokmah, or an unfoldment of Chokmah. That's why it is said that Binah has as a father Chokmah, which is wisdom. So when he, Bina becomes divided into feminine and masculine polarities, they unite in the mystery of that. That's the mystery of that. Is the mystery of the two, uh, or the union of feminine and masculine, which in Kabbalah is called Abba and Aima. So that Aima is precisely what we call mother. And is the Shekinah above in heaven. That Shekinah, or that power of the Elohim, that has the power of creating, or placing in each one of us, that embryo, that spirit, that is called the child of God, that Ruach Elohim, that has to descend into the physical body, and through them, to this Jehovah Elohim, these two polarities above, do the work. Because when you read the Bible, it says, And Elohim say. This Elohim is Abba and Aima. Because Elohim means gods and goddesses. The two polarities. Male, female. And Elohim said that there be light. And the light was good. In other words, the light that emerged there in the spinal column is Gedula. And sequentially, you keep reading... And you find that this Elohim is working and keep working in Malkut, transmuting the waters, which are called Mayim in Kabbalah. 
Mayim is water. Maya is a word in Sanskrit related with the mother of Buddha. And also, Maya is uh, the divine mother or the force of the divine mother among the Mayans. So we hold here the similitude of Maya and Mayim, the waters. It's simply the waters below. And those waters below in Yesod, in the sexual organs, is what we call the lower Shekinah. That is Shekinah below. Whose power is, is enclosed. Or as we said in Kabbalah, is in exile. With the Chakra Muladhara. Chakra Muladhara, with that we study Kabbalah and alchemy, is directly related with Malkut. Because Malkut is the earth. And the Chakra Muladhara is related to the, the tatua of the earth called Prithvi. So follow me, because here is precisely the, the meaning of hearing of how that Shekinah works with the power of the Holy Spirit through the cross. Because in Gedulah, we teach about the mystery of the cross. In this day and age, many fundamentalists talk about the power of the cross. And many Christians have that symbol in their homes, the cross. But they do not know the meaning of it. They think that it is just related with the torture or crucifixion of the Lord Jesus 2,000 years ago. They know that the cross is a symbol, ancient, very ancient. And that the process written in the Gospels is related with that alchemical force Really, with a sexual act. We are not going to talk about the torture that people inflicted in Master Jesus 2,000 years ago. That's another topic. We're talking here about the symbol written in the Gospels about the cross that we have to understand. Because on the cross is precisely salvation. On the cross, it says, is where Christ heard his blood and his water from the wound after that soldier uh, pierced him with the lance, with the spear. And that's precisely a complete sexual symbol that many uh, Pharisees don't like to talk about. They don't like that. But it's true. And it's, we are explaining here because the union, the cross, the union of the horizontal beam, which is the woman, the feminine aspect, with the vertical beam, which is the man, in the sexual act, by the mystery of Da'at, which is alchemy, awakes the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of God, which is hovering in the sexual waters. In Mayim, in Maya, below in Malkut. And through the process of Genesis, or the seven days of Genesis, or better say, six, because in the sixth day is when the human being is created. It's a process, you know, of transmutation, of transformation. And that's why it is stated that after the creation of certain day, or every day of Genesis, it is stated, and Elohim saw that it was good. In other words, we will say, and Ava and Aima, the Holy Spirit, working in the vessel in Malkut, in different octaves, in every octave, Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, and the Divine Mother Kundalini, saw that it was Gedula appearing in each step. Because it is the work of Hesed, which is the real Son of God above, that descends in order to create. This is precisely what our own particular monad, spirit, wants. He wants to create the man into his own image. 
And that's why it descends at Salem in the sexual energy. In order to elaborate that little by little in the different steps. That's why we state that the Soma Suchikon or the Borichita is the outcome of the Neuma or the work. Very hard work that we have to build. So the Neuma is building that which is called the vessel. You see? That's the vessel. Because uh, that vessel has to receive the incarnation, which is above. It's like you, if you want to use a car, let's say that uh, you don't know, or, or there is no way to buy it, and you have the ability to build it, so you build your car with your ability, with your intelligence, you see, with your bina. And in the end, when this is done, could be a cartridge, whatever, you just enter there and it's, uh, it's your vessel. You, you made it. You see, in this work of alchemy that I was planning here, nobody is going to do the work for, for you. You have to do it. So when that vessel is, is done, and then you start receiving you have to understand that the different elements through a process psychological elements and the neuma elements the psyche and the spirit in different steps that is a process of what we call metempsychosis the process of incarnation or reincarnation during the initiation because in Malkut, in this physical world, we have other type of Kabbalists. In other words, other type of initiates, which receive as well. But they don't receive the Neuma. That's why here in Klipoth, you find that it's called Klipa, which means shell, empty shells. Meaning vessels that do not have nothing t or have anything to do with Hesed. Why? Because in the physical world, in Malkut, these Kabbalists that know the mystery of that fornicate. In other words, they spill the Ruach Elohim. They spill the Zalem of God, which is hovering in their own sexual waters. With that attitude, they, of course, are awakening. Because this is called what is called black tantrism. Black tantrism among the Kabbalists. Like you can name them in other places, different names. But since we are talking Kabbalah, we are applying the Hebrew word Kabbalah, which means to receive. These black tantric initiates, they commit the crime of spilling the Zalem, the image of God, which is, as I said, hovering in the waters, your sexual waters. With that procedure, they start developing the Kunda buffer. What is the Kunda buffer? Is what in the Bible talks uh, about the tale of Satan. The energy which is in Malkut, in other words, the Shekinah, that is in exile, that is within the Muladhara Chakra, and instead of rising in the spinal column and giving birth to that Ruach Elohim, that is good, that is Gedulah, they do the opposite. They awake that Shekinah in the opposite way. In other words, they work with Lilith. In Kabbalah we name about the naked virgin or the naked Shekinah. And that is precisely when the force of Shekinah descends into Klipoth. And transform into Lilith. Ein Ahema. That is what is stated. 
that when Adam and Eve fornicated, which in this case we will say, Chava, Eve, as you already know, we always repeat, in Malkut is related with the forces of procreation. The forces of procreation is Chava. That's why in the Bible, Chava is called the mother of the living. The Haya, the life, is in the sexual energy. And of course, when we arrive at this uh, topic, we will say that the sexual energy is divided in two poles. The Zimin and the Cephalic Rachidian fluid is the other opposite. One is in relation with Adam. The Cephalic Rachidian fluid is in relation with Adam, which is Pingala, which develops the brain. But Hava, which is Ida, Eve, is in relation with procreation. So that's why when you name Adam and Eve, as you already know through the video that we are delivering, Adam is the brain and Hava is the sex. So when we transmute the energy, Hava, Eve, rises as Shekinah to the brain. And then the angel is created with all the vessels that we talk here to the book of Genesis. Because nobody can create those vessels in order to receive the power of Gedula and above if he or she doesn't create first that vessel. But as I stated, the, back, the, the black tantric Kabbalists they spill the sexual energy. Doesn't matter if they do it once a week, once a month. The fact is, by spilling it, it's a crime, as is written in the Bible. You shall not eat from that fruit. Between parentheses, that reminds me of the experience of the Master Samael when he was investigating precisely in the time of Lemuria the fallen of humanity. And he wrote that when he was in the Akashic records invoking certain couple from the seventh sub-race of Lemuria, which was already a fallen humanity, he asked to the couple, precisely to the men, how were you reproducing yourselves in your epoch? And then the man says, well, we were spilling the Zalem of God in order to have our creatures, but only for multiplication. Only for that. And then the master said, it doesn't matter. You were doing just for that, but that is like sacrilegious. You shouldn't spill the Zalem of God in order to create creatures in the physical world. Oh, said the man. But in that moment, we were having a very edifying attitude and concentrated in our own particular Gedula in order to him to create that creature. And then the Master Samael answered to this uh, Lemurian. He says, Worst! Because if you were concentrated in your gedula and you were spilling his image through the sexual orgasm, is this a crime really in the face of God? Aren't you ashamed of that? He says, well, but this is what we do. This is how we multiply. Yes, says the master, but not always was the multiplication of the races in that way. Let me invoke for you another friend of mine that lived, he said, in the fourth sub-race of this Lemurian race, which in that time they were multiplying according to the commandments of Elohim. 
And then the man says, please do it. And then he invoked a master. He says, and the master came. It was the Bodhisattva of the master. And sadly, said the master, that Bodhisattva was fallen. Because at that time he was standing, but now was falling. And he came with many hearts above his head. Those hearts symbolize the different nationalities where this Bodhisattva was reincarnated. And each heart was representing different women with which he was fornicating. And then the, when the Bodhisattva arrived, uh, the Master says, We have invoked you because I want to ask you a question in order to witness this with these friends of mine. But why are you having all of those hats on top of your head? Don't be sacrilegious, he says. Don't be vulgar. Disintegrate them. And then the Master says, The Bodhisattva did an effort, profound effort, and disintegrated the, the, the hats, which really says, uh, I was pleased. Because that's a symbol of something that he is going to do later on. Related, of course, with sex. And then he says, when the hats disappeared, the master asked, Can you tell us how were you multiplying in your time? Well, he says, we were having sexual act, but we were never spilling the salem of God. In other words, we were not eating on the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Aha, this is how you multiply in your time, eh? Yes, he says. Do you realize that? He says to the other couple that were there from the seventh sub race, of the Lemurian race. Yes, he says, but we didn't know it. But now you know it, he says. And then the master continued talking about their experience with that ancient Lemurian that at that time was fallen. And then he asked him and says, Are you willing to give testimony of what you said to me here in the physical plane? And then that Lemurian says, Yes, I will. And this is how the experience ended with another uh, details that we are not going to talk about here. But the fact is here that uh, at this couple of the seven sub race of the Lemurian epoch were performing the sexual act with that holy attitude, etc. Is precisely how in this day and age many Kabbalists do. They think that by having that attitude of remembering Gedula and doing the work in that way, and spilling, this is not bad. This is precisely a sacrilegious. Because they first invoke their own Gedula, their own Gesed, and then thereafter they spill the seed, the Zalem. That's precisely a terrible crime. That is the crime of Esau, or Isau, as the Bible talks about. Who is Esau? Esau was that who sold his first right for a dish of lentils, which is fornication. This Esau is precisely the serpent. Why did I say that is the serpent? The tempting serpent of Eden. It is written there in the Gospels that, uh, or in the Old Testament that when Esau was, was born, Behind him was coming Jacob, holding his heel. But that, of course, is a symbol of how Jacob, which is a symbol of Tifereth, willpower, was controlling. This is the right hand. Doesn't mean that the baby was holding the heel of Esau. It means that symbolically he was controlling already Esau which is a symbol of the venom blood. Isau is that poison blood that circulates in Malkut, which is that serpent which brings all the animalistic, all this bestial inheritance from the animal kingdom. Because any animal fornicates. 
So when you enter into the intellectual animal kingdom and you receive the commandments, unfortunately you have within your blood, within that poison blood that comes from the liver, the tempting serpent of Eden. And here you find precisely another symbol. The liver is related with the planet Mars. Mars is ruled by Samael. Samael is one of the archangels that gave the body of desire to beasts, to animals. And that why it's written in the Zohar that Samael was riding a serpent, and Samael was the one that tempted Eve, which is the force of procreation. Because that force comes from the animal kingdom through the blood, which is called Esau. Hill. You remember Genesis? That is said that when the woman is eating, when Hava Eve is eating from the fruit, he said that the serpent will hurt, hurts, bruise, bruise yeah, will, will bruise the heel. Yeah? That heel is Esau, the, the same blood, and will hurt the head, which is Adam. With fornication, you hear the brain. And this is precisely what happened with the black tantric people. They fornicate. They enjoy uh, the orgasm in order to develop the kundavafer, the tail of Satan. And they uh, become, become disciples of the world of Poth. Empty vessels for Gedulah. But vessels that will absorb all the garbage from Poth. And acquire power in Klippoth, in hell, but never in heaven. And of course, the vessels that they utilize in order to acquire that through the development of the Kundabafer, the tail of Satan, those vessels is the physical body and the protoplasmic bodies, which are lunar. And that's why, as much as they fornicate and receive more from Klippoth, the father they become psychological. Their ego becomes gross and gross, huge and huge. If you read the book, The Revolution of Belzebub, this is precisely how it is explained. Belzebub was really very fat, huge gorilla, black, a monster, because he knew how to develop the Kunda buffer and acquire the 30. Uh, the 13 degrees of black magic. The 13 degrees of black magic are the opposite of the 13 sephiroth. When you talk about the tree of life, you count 10 sephiroth to Keter and beyond. You find the Ains of Or, the Ains of, and the Ain. There are 13 heavens. So any authentic white tantric cabalist Develop the 13 heavens. But unfortunately, exist the 13 black degrees, which is exactly the contrary, the opposite. Black Kabbalists that develop the Kunda buffer, they absorb all the power of Klippoth and they acquire power in the physical world. Money, like Mammon, power in different ways in relation with the empty shells of Klippoth, hell, and they become hierarchs of hell. And, of course, Belzebub was one of them, and when the master found him, he was really huge, a monster. And all the powers that he was developing and had at that time were related to Klippoth. So he was a magician, Remember that mag comes from the Sanskrit, which means priest. And he thought that he was in the positive way, because he was developing powers, but in the lower dimensions. Why are we talking about this tantrism in this uh, moment, in this level of the path of the Bodhisattva? Because we are entering into Hesed. And Hesed is the head of the ten sephiroth, the top of the mountain of initiation. 
And it is there in the head, or as the gospel says, in the mount of the skull, which is here, where you find precisely the cephalic rachidian fluid below to the spinal cord, commanded by Peter, the head of the church, or the head of the temple. You see, that's why Peter, the apostle of Jesus, is always, we always state that he's related with the pineal gland. Right? And it's called cephas, which comes from the same roots, kephas, cephalic, related with the head. You know, he's cephas, which I declare means stone. And upon this stone, which means through the pineal gland, he builds the church of God. Because the signs of Peter is the sexual transmutation that we are talking here. That's why Peter the Apostle was crucified upside down. In other words, like saying, your head, your cephas, your kephas, your cephalic, has to control the sexual waters. These are the signs of Peter. Simon Peter, the first apostle. But his opposite is Simon Magus. That's the opposite pole. You see, everything has different poles in, in the cosmos. Kabbalistically speaking, you find Peter, the apostle, the head of the church. Your own church. Your own building that you have to perform inside of you. With the transmutation of white tantra. But the opposite is Simon Magus. Simon Magus, you see always Simon Peter, Simon Magus. Simon Priest, in other words. In other words, those people that know the mystery that we are talking here, because this mystery was hidden, now is public. So those priests, or in Sanskrit we will say those magicians, mag priest, uh, opposite of Peter, are called symbolically Simon Magus. Of course, Simon Magus is a black magician. With the, in the book of uh, Acts, it's written there. That was asking money, or offering, I mean, money to the apostles. It says, give me your power so I can get that power that you have of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Shekinah above. And then, Peter says, let your money die with you. Because you think that you can buy the power of what with money. The power of God cannot be sell. But uh, in this uh, Malkut, there are many priests, magicians, that work in different levels with Tantra. And they think that they can acquire everything with money. Why? Because money is the power of Malkut. That's the power here. You know that. You want power? You have to acquire money, more money. But that's the black path. And in black tantra, black Kabbalists, they teach you how to make money, how to become millionaire, how to become billionaire. And they say, they appear, says, oh, you are a Kabbalist because you have a lot of money. So you are receiving and receiving and receiving a lot of power from Malkut. But when you enter into the astral plane, you find that money here in the physical plane is symbolized in the internal planes as manure, as poop. That is not the power of the white lodge. The power of the white lodge, the money of the white lodge are superior levels, consciousness, forces that you have to develop. But the Master Jesus says, strive to acquire money in heaven, treasures in heaven, not in earth. Because at the end you die and you don't take anything. But you see, this is precisely that when the Lord Christ is crucified in the mount of the skull, you see the skull, in it we find 
the brain. And the brain is a vehicle either of the solar mind, which is Elias, as we were explaining in other lectures, or of the protoplasmic mind, which is the bad thief. Because there are two thieves crucified in each side of the mount of the skull. The good and the bad. The good, listen carefully, the good thief is Gedula, the goodness. That element that you have to work with in order to steal the energy from nature and to create the vessel for your own God, your own Elohim. That's the good thief, Gedula. But the bad thief, of course, is that bestial power that will awake your Kunda buffer and that will steal the power of the Elohim in order to acquire power in Klipoth. That's the two thieves. That's why when we enter into that mystery of Gedula or Hesed, you find precisely the mystery of the two thieves. Because either you awake for Gedula, for good, for your own Hesed, or in evil, Klipoth, for your own Lilith. Black tantrism. Do you follow that? Do you understand that? Because the Divine Mother, Kundalini, as we said, is called Aima Elohim in Hebrew. Aima means mother. But in Greek, Aima means blood. Of course, Greek and Hebrew have the same roots. Ima or Aima is the mother, is the blood. Did you hear before that the blood is a vehicle of the spirit? And here you find another meaning. In Hebrew, blood is called dam. It's written with Dalet and Mem, dam. That is, blood. But if you write Aleph in the beginning of that word, you find the word Adam. So that Aleph is a symbol in Kabbalah of air. That air is the wind. is the spirit that floats on the dam. That's why we stated in other lectures, when you breathe, you extract from the oxygen of the atmosphere the breath of God into your nostrils. That oxygen which brings the breath of God, the Zalem of God into your nostrils, goes into your lungs and purifies Esau. In other words, transform that poison blood into purified blood. So you understand that? Why the word in also, they said that Sam means poison. The blood that comes from the, from the liver in your physical body is a poison blood that goes into your lungs and because of the breathing becomes purified and goes and returns into the heart and that is Jacob. You see how Jacob takes the inheritance of Esau and places it in the heart. Do you got that? Because this is very hidden. This is a symbol very hidden in the Bible. And that is Adam. That's why the, the, the creation of the true human being is done through the heart. That's why Jacob in the heart, we represent Tifred, received the inheritance from Esau. But that Esau, which is the poison blood in your body, is a one bestial force that push you to fornicate, to adulterate, and to do all the bestiality that in this day and age all human beings or intellectual animals, better said, are doing in the planet. That's Esau. But in the work, when you come here, you come as Esau. 
Because all of us are fornicators, adulterers. All of us have that poison blood in our body. So then we start applying the signs of God that we know that that aleph, that wind, that spirit of God enters into the nostrils and purifies the blood and is not longer dumb, but a dumb. And as carrying the spirit of God, the blood, which is the vehicle of the spirit, this sense and transform itself into semen. Semen is precisely the last outcome where the Zalem of God is placed. That's why semen in uh, Hebrew is called Zara. You see, that's uh, the word for, for semen. T Z A R A Zara. And here, if we take that uh, Zare letter out and we put the Shin letter, we can say Zari, which is the 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 name that the wife of Abraham had in the beginning. Zari, but at the end, she became Zara with Shin. Because the fire is there, you see? Sheen is fire. So when you know about... Yeah, Zara, Zara is Zimen. And in Tibetan language, the same word for Bodhicitta is the word that we use for Zimen. So zimen, bodhicitta, zimen, the mind, everything is related here. So Zara, Zara, the wife of Abraham, is Zara, with Shin. We will say Shara, because it is no longer uh, ejaculating the zimen. It's transmuting the zalem, so that fire is sh- the Isha, the feminine aspect of God, rising. And that's Zara, the wife of Abraham. Because Abraham also has a symbol in his ascension of Hesed, the father of the heights. That's Hesed, Abraham. And that has his wife, which is Malkut. You see? That's why it says there, when he is in front of the Pharaoh or uh, in front of, I believe, Abimelech, another king of that area of Egypt, he says, my wife, says Abraham, is my sister. You see? Malkut, or the forces, the feminine aspects of Malkut here, that is transmuting with his sister, because she is also the daughter of my father. In other words, the daughter of Chokmah, as we said in the beginning, daughter of your son. But is not the same daughter as I am of my mother. Because the mother of Abraham is precisely the Shekinah above. But Shekinah unfolded is in Malkut in exile, and that's the wife. In other words, that Shekinah, that wife, Zara, wife of Abraham, is an unfoldment of the first Shekinah above. The Divine Mother above becomes in Malkut. And when you awake that fire, that Shekinah in Malkut, the Divine Mother shines in both, because it's the same force. An unfoldment of the Holy Spirit. So here you find... Why in Galatians is written, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He is not not into seeds, as speaking of many, but as one. And to thy seed, which is Christ, which is the Salem. That seed is Zara, which becomes Shara, his wife, when he starts transmuting. And that Isaac, 
of course, is the outcome of it. So are you following this? Because here you find precisely the mystery of uh, the two thieves. And why Peter, which in, in Greek means petera, rock or stone, is the head exactly in the pineal gland of the church of Rome. Rome, backwards, is amore in Latin or Italian. So he's the head of the church of love, in other words, of the transmutation, of the work of the cross. But his opposite, of course, is uh, Simon the Magus, the priest that fornicates, the priest that becomes a vessel from Klippoth. So, In the physical world, <coughs> as you know, we have the world of Malkut, the three brains. These three brains are related with the religious world. When we talk about the religious world, we're talking about those people that really want to self-realize themselves, people that really love religion. We're not talking about here atheists. The people that know this mystery that we're talking here, and uh, sometimes they don't know how to interpret the scriptures, so they follow at the dead letter what is written. That is called the religious world. This religious world uh, is in relation with Malkut and could be applied to any religion. Any religion. But since we are talking about the Gospels, we have to talk about that Kabbalah in relation with the Gospels. In order to understand the three brains of the religious world that the initial has to confront, has to face. Because this is what we do. When we start working with our own particular goodness, with our own particular gedulah, and we teach this, then something happened. There are two ways, you know. That's why Geset has two names. Geset and Gedulah. Gedulah is precisely that goodness that appears in every step until you become an initiate when you rise all the seven serpents of fire. But that Gedulah is Gedulah just above if that goodness wants to descend and to help humanity, then that goodness decides, that neuma decides to take the direct path, the path of the Bodhisattva. And instead of Gedula, he, beco he becomes Chesed. So you have, you have to understand these two names. Gedula is above, but Chesed is when the work is done, and then you start working with charity. Or giving the knowledge. Helping your fellow man. And that's why it is uh, written. In the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 8, verse 34. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. These are the three factors. To deny oneself means to annihilate all the bestiality that we have within, inherited from the animal kingdom, that we call ego, and to annihilate all the lunar vessels that only collects, that only receive from Klippoth. And uh, those vessels are the protoplasmic bodies. That is to deny oneself. It's a long process. And it says, take up his cross. Well, you had to become a white tantra. 
Because black countries cannot receive the neuma. Remember that the path of the Bodhisattva is the acquisition of the neuma, which is above, which is in relation with the Geburaje 31st, and also the other triangle above. That's the superior neuma. To receive that in you is Kabbalah, you see, to receive, to incarnate. That is what is called incarnation. Not like many other people think that it's only related with uh, the process of coming and receiving many bodies. That is a process which is mechanical. The way we call that process return. But reincarnation is a process of initiation in which you receive, little by little, your neuma. But the neuma cannot incarnate in the protoplasmic bodies. In other words, God cannot incarnate in any beast. God only incarnates in the bodhicitta, in the superior vessel that we have to build. That's why the book of Genesis is written, that you have to create that. Don't think that the book of Genesis was written just for fun. No, it was written there in order to indicate to you that you have to create that if you want to receive the neuma. But people here in the physical world think that they can receive the neuma and all the attributes of the Sephiroth just by studying Kabbalah or just by reciting prayers, etc. and fornicating, spilling the Salem of God. That is not to receive anything but Kippah. And... Uh, that's why it says, and follow me after that, the other, the other factor, which is, of course, charity. You see, how, this is how you study this verse. To deny yourself means to begin with avoiding the spasm. That's the beginning. In order to create the superior vessel, the Merkava, so your God can be riding there in that chariot. That's the first step. To take the cross, because with the cross is how you perform it. With a sexual, tantric, white transmutation. And when you perform the whole thing, of course, you follow him. To follow Chokhmah, to follow the Christ, is precisely to take the direct path. The path of the Bodhisattva. So, when you start performing that, and then, of course, you find uh, many enemies inside of you and outside of you. The ones which are related to the motor, instinctual, sexual center is called in the Gospels the elders. The elders of the temple, which are individuals which are attached to traditions. Jewish traditions, Buddhist traditions, Christian traditions, Muslim traditions, any type of traditions related with any religion. They perform their duty in the temple, they assist there, and they think because they are good parents, because they fulfill the duties of a good citizen, and because they go to church, or to the temple, to the mesquite, to the synagogue, etc., etc., this is done. And when they die, they will uh, go into heaven or resurrect in the future day just because they were belonging to that particular sect. That's precisely the, the elders of the temple. And the others, which are above in this emotional brain, are there Pharisees. The orthodox people religious orthodox, who presume of having the truth <coughs> and that they perform their rites and through those rites, which we are spending here, they are going eventually to be great niches, great vessels of the neuma, of the spirit. But nobody becomes a vessel of the spirit just by believing or just by studying or repeating prayers. Because the real vessels are working with the cross. That's why you find that when the Lord is crucified, 
these elders, these Pharisees of the temple, they say, if you descend from the cross, then we will live in you. Descend from the cross. Right? In other words, they are saying, abandon that transmutation with the cross. Why are you suffering too much nailed to the cross? Why are you trying to transform yourself with that torture of transmuting your sexual energy and annihilating your ego? Because that's the symbol of the Christ crucified on the cross. Because Christ is in re. Ignis natura renovatur integra. The fire of nature renews nature completely, incessantly. So that Christ, that entity, is doing the work on the cross of the man and the woman. That's Inri. That's the, myst- the mystery. And of course, the Pharisees and the elders don't like that. They want a Christ that will agree with their fornication, with their adultery, with their fanaticism, and with all of that which is related with the bestiality that we have within. But the Christ already know them very well. Because also the, the scribes, is that which are in the head, the intellectuals, those that study, of course, the Bible, that study the Sohar, that study the Buddhism, and the, the Torah, or, or the Koran, and they memorize that, and they think they know about that, because they study a lot, not the scribes. That Jesus finds when the neuma descends into Malkut and it starts rising in the spinal column. The first, the elders. And then the Pharisees in the heart, which believe that they are good because they believe, because they only do good things. But they don't do good with the Getula. They just do the good with your protoplasmic bodies. That's not good. Getula is precisely the one that we have to use. He said, have to descend and to perform the right good. That's why we said love, gedula, is a law. But cognizant gedula, cognizant love, when you know. A lot of people say, oh yeah, we have to be compassionate. We have to go and help humanity, but with conscious love, with gedula. If you don't know that Gedula is in your sexual energy and it has to build all Genesis within you, what are you preaching? That you have to be good with your protoplasmic bodies? Those protoplasmic bodies belong to Klippoth. Whether you are a Kabbalist, a, a Jew, a Christian, a Buddhist, a Muslim, or even Gnostic, if you memorize all this Gnosticism and you don't perform what we are teaching, you go with your protoplasmic bodies to Klippoth. Because God cannot receive, cannot be received in the protoplasmic bodies, in the body of a beast. We have to build the bodies of God, which is the image of him. So therefore, when you start doing this work, as you know, you find all the elders, all the Pharisees and the scribes for different religions that start arguing with you, telling, it, telling you that you are wrong, that is not the path, that it has to be in this way, and why is God putting this too much burden on, on our backs? Why this and why that? But through the rising of that fire to the month of the skulls, the Christ, which is coming with Gedula, is knowing each part of our psyche. And he received every, every type of insults. Because during the cross that he is carrying in his shoulders, on his shoulders, that cross or that path of the cross is a symbol of the transmutation, sexual chastity that we had to perform with our own particular Mary Magdalene. As we are men. And if we are women, and then we had to have our own particular husband in order to perform and to carry the cross from the very bottom of Malkut to Hesed. And with that process of cross, the Christ is discovering and knowing yourself, knowing your elders, knowing your Pharisees, and all your theories, and the, which are the scribes. 
So when he arri- arrived to the top of the skull, when he's crucifying there, it is because the den of the ego, the cave where all that bestiality hides, is the mind. That mind, that protoplasmic mind, that utilizes the brain as a vehicle in order to implant theories, in order to implant dogmas, beliefs. But Christ here is against that. And that's why when they see the Lord crucified on the Mount of the Skulls, instead of feeling pity for him, they hate him. And the Lord only says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. And then they say, look, he's, looking for, he's calling for Elias, the solar mind, the Logos. He says, let's see, let's see if he descends and take him out of that path of the Bodhisattva, and the path of the cross, and all those mysteries that we don't like, because we hate that cross. In other words, they said in synthesis, we are vampires. We don't like the cross. We like to fornicate. We like to commit any type of adultery with Lilith. Because Lilith is the mother of false sexual degeneration. And that's precisely what the black countries follow. They practice that and they teach that you have to reach the cosmic orgasm and many silly things like that, in order to make you a slave of Klippoth. When you already are a slave of Klippoth, because you have the protoplasmic bodies that belong to Klippoth, you have your ego that belongs to Klippoth, why are you going to fortify those elements in you in order to go to hell more fat, fatter? So what you have to do is to eliminate that. It is precisely what the Lord Jesus says. He says, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? The Soma Suchikong. For the Son of Man, the Neumaticon, shall come in the glory of his Father, the Neuma, with his angels. And then he shall reward every man, every bodhicitta, according to his works. Verily I said unto you, there be some twice born, which already are in the level of Gedula, here we shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man, the Neumaticon, coming in his kingdom. Coming, in other words, incarnating in him. Because when you are already at that level, you can incarnate the Lord, the Son of Man, and continue your psychological work. That is what is stated in Matthew chapter 16, 24, 28. So that's why when we started the lecture, we said, Hasmalim, enlighten me with the splendors of Elohim and Shekinah. Well, the Hasmalim are the beings, the gods, in other words, related with Hesed, those gods that are charitable, that are compassionate. (coughs) Those are the Hasmalim. Enlighten me. And here we find the word. Why we said enlighten me? Because the Hasmalim are called the enlightened ones. That is what the word Hasmalim means in Hebrew. The enlightened ones. And those enlightened ones are the Buddhas. In Sanskrit, which means enlightened. And of course, the true Buddha is in Chesed. In us. But we said, enlighten me with the splendors of Elohim, which we explained already. The Elohim are the superior forces of Bina that work through sexual alchemy. White Tantra, no black. 
the splendors of the forces, in other words, the, of the light of Elohim, and Shekinah. You see? Not only the Shekinah above, because each one of us has his own particular Shekinah. But here below in this physical body, that Shekinah is precisely in the chakra muladhara, hidden, waiting for the awakening. And that's precisely the, the work. That when the Lord is crucified, he says, I am thirsty. And they put in a cane a sponge and buy it with vinegar. That reed, that cane, symbolizes the spinal column. And he takes that vinegar as symbolically saying, the path of the spine that you were throw, that you are walking on, and now you are reaching the top of the skull. That you are how to face your own uh, protoplasmic elements within your skull, within your mind, within your head, within your cephalic, and of course that bitter. Because let me tell you. It's nothing pleasant to sit down and to start inquiring in your mind and to see that in your mind is only filthiness. And you comprehend what ego in you as annihilation to your Shekinah, to annihilate that ego and more filthiness. And more filthiness. That's bitter. And it's precisely the Lord, the Christ, united with the initiate that sees that. Through the spinal column, the work with the transmutation, he only sees filthiness. This is bitter. The work that we do. But he is there, there and he says, I have to die within this initiate because I want to help him. And with his death, he annihilates death. With his death, he destroys completely the ego of that initiate within which he is incarnated. You have to understand that. It's just not by believing. Because in the mystery of the cross is salvation. But that cross has to be taken from the bottom. From Malkut. The Lord was not here on the school already there crucified. No. He went to Pilate. To the mind. You know. As we explained in the previous lecture in Geburah. He was there in front of Barabbas. Which is precisely that ego which gathers all the garbage from Kipov. And he was seeing that, and he said, this is my own interpretation, my goodness, here is this individual that I have to annihilate, that I have to kill. How horrible he is. But he has the power now. And then the multitude says, liberate Barabbas, liberate Barabbas, because those multitudes are egos, bestiality that we have within. They don't like the Lord. Why we have to die, they say. Why we have to be annihilated. And of course, Pilate, the mind, washes his hand. He says, well, we have to send this uh, individual to death. Because he is what he wants. He wants to deny himself. And then he starts from the bottom. Carrying from Malkut, the cross, until the month of the skulls. Cephas, where Peter is, the head of the church. He goes. And if you read the Gospels, the path of the cross, then you will understand all the process that you have to suffer if you accept to take the cross. It's not that you are going to believe in the cross. It's not that you are going to take that symbol and to hang it in your chest. Although you want to appear before all the multitudes with a cane, with a cross there and showing on top of your head. And said, oh, I am Christ. I am a, a, a Christian. No. To take the cross means to descend into the ninth sphere. Because that is precisely the moment in which in, uh, the multitude says, crucify him. But the multitude expect that the Lord will fornicate. But he descends to the ninth sphere, take his wife, which is Mary Magdalene, and start working with the cross, which is sexual transmutation. And do not commit the crime of spilling the Zalem. And because of that, of course, it's a big scandal. 
the elders of the temple, the Pharisees, make the biggest scandal. Look, this man with his wife, and he doesn't fornicate. He transmutes. That's a madness. He's going to be sick, and he had to be uh, or to have different diseases, etc. And, and have they start saying many things. But he keeps ahead, receiving spits from the people, which are the ego. Criticism from others, stones. But on the path, he finds, of course, beautiful people too, parts of the being, which help him. And on the path, he finds Simon. I know the Simon here. Have you see, I know the Simon. Simon from Zyrenia. That Simon from Zyrenia is the same Chesed, his own inner master, that comes to assist him, his own guru. His own inner master comes to assist him on the path. Because he needs to walk away. He says, go ahead, my son. Let me help you to carry your cross. You see? If Gedula doesn't descend, how is he going to help the initiate to uh, to carry the cross? That Gedula has to descend because he's the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God. And as that, he helps his own soul to carry the cross to the Mount of the Skulls. That's why it is written in the Bible, in the Gospels, that this Simon from Cyrene was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Alexander, of course, is the one that uh, says that sacrifice for, for humanity. That's the name of... Uh, or the name uh, Alexander, which I believe I have here the interpretation, but <coughs> okay. But if you inquire the meaning of the name Alexander, this Simon is the father of Alexander, means the one that sacrifices and, uh, and that helps the people. That's the meaning of Alexander. And Rufus is the one that works with the fire because he's uh, related with a person that has red hair. And red hair is a symbol in Greek mythology about the people that transmute the fire, that have fire in their head. You see, the head, because we're talking about the skull here, the head. All of that is in symbol there written in the Gospels. The path of the cross is the path of the Bodhisattva. That's why we state it. We are not the first one that teach this. Jesus was not the first one that took the cross and was crucified in the mount of the skulls. There were many initiates that did it because this is a chemical process in which you had to work with the Spirit of God. You had to rise it to the skull and to crucify your bestiality in your head, which is your mind, which is the den of the defect. And to face your own scribes your own Pharisees, and your own elders of the temple. This is a process that any initiate lives in the, lived in the past, is living in this present, and will live in the future. Among the Greek initiates, Jesus is the greatest one that came and showed this path publicly. He came in order to show that, that we are teaching here to the public. At that time, of course, the initiates, the Kabbalists, white tantric, they understood all the past, all, all the steps to the tra- transformation, to the incarnation of the neuma. Because this process is a pl- process of what we call reincarnation. In the beginning, when you reach the level of Tifereth, the fifth initiation of Mayor Mysteries, you incarnate your human soul, you become a bodhicitta. Somebody that has all the vehicles already created there. But that bodhicitta is still part of it, bottled up within the ego, within the protoplasmic bodies. That's why you find that type of initial here and is always with ego. That's the first incarnation. Or if we said reincarnation, we will say if that initiate fell in past ages, 
Now he is rising again, and of course is reincarnating, meaning incarnation means to be in the flesh. That's the meaning of the word incarnation. And reincarnation means to be inside of the flesh again. But of course, because people always come and be in a new body, a new flesh again, they think, oh, I am reincarnating. But strictly speaking, in esotericism, we are not talking about the protoplasmic bodies or the ego or the bestiality that we have within. That returns mechanically into this physical world 108 times. When we talk about reincarnation or incarnation, we are talking about the monad, the neuma. First, Tifereth, which is called the human soul, enters and incarnates or reincarnates. Then, with the process of the cross, which is the annihilation, the denying of one self bestiality, and when that ego is completely annihilated, in the world of Malkut, which is related, that ego is related with the 96 last of Klippoth, the first sphere. We're not issued annihilation of those egos, all of those psychological aggregates related with the 96 last, and it's completely clean. Then he is ready to incarnate. Geburah and Gesed, the superior part of his monad. Many Gnostics think that when somebody reaches the fifth initiation of Mayo Mysteries, the Neuma, Gesed with Geburah, incarnate as well. No. The only thing that incarnates is Tiferet, the human soul. If you want to incarnate your Gedula and Gebura, you have to annihilate your ego. You have to deny yourself. That's why it's written, whosoever wants to come after me has to deny himself. That's the neuma. And then uh, when you deny yourself and completely annihilate your ego, and then your vessel in Malkut is clean. Only Malkut is clean. You are dead on the cross. And then you say, Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. Or I commanded my spirit. He said. He's talking about, of course, the superior part of He said. So that Gedulah then, with Geburah, enters. And that is called the reincarnation of a Buddha. Before that, nobody is a Buddha. Because the Buddha, in order to be a Buddha, Buddha has to be inside of the vessel. If you are not inside of the vessel, why are you going to call yourself Buddha? Maybe somebody in the process of becoming a Buddha, but only by entering into Malkut, Gebura and Gedula, then is the Buddha. Or we will say the enlightened one, which is Hesed, the Hasmalim, is inside, and is a Buddha. That's why we said that Jesus of Nazareth was a Buddha, is because Hesed was inside of him. And as Hesed, he was teaching. This is what we call in Buddhism, Dhyani Bodhisattva. Dhyani is Gebura and Hesed, and Tiferet, together. That's the Diani Bodhisattva. But a Bodhisattva in itself without Hebura and Geset is only Tiferet. It's a Bodhisattva in process. And that's precisely what we call the metempsychosis. The process in which the psyche is changing little by little and the neuma, the spirit, reincarnates. Master Samael on the or, was a reincarnated Buddha. And because he took the path of the Bodhisattva, that Buddha become a Maitreya, which is a symbol, meaning a Christified Buddha, 
a Buddha that incarnates Avalokiteshvara. So that is what we call Buddha Maitreya. But if you have the ego alive, of course, it's, not, it's, it's difficult to call yourself Buddha Maitreya or process. And Maitreya means love. Gedula. But remember this. One is the Gedula above, because there are many initiates in Nirvana that have the Gedula, because they perform the work. They are that level of Buddha above, but not Buddha below. To be a Buddha below in Malkut, incarnated or reincarnated in the physical body, for that, you have to have the vessels. For that, you have to annihilate your ego. And it's precisely what all the prophets and Master Jesus teach. Hmm? To be a Hasmalim. And then you become enlightened with the powers of Elohim and Shekinah. Simple, right? I mean in explanation. But in the performance, it's really possible to do it, if you follow. And that's the process of the cross. On the mount of the skulls. Read carefully that process. And then you will understand. What is to be a true Christian. Because the blood of Christ in the blood is salvation. But that blood is Aima. Which is mother. It's the blood that becomes Zimin. And if you spill the seed. You are not being washed with the blood of the Lord. The blood of the Lord has to be assimilated, transmuted in your organism. And the blood of the Lord washes the sins of our bestiality world. And this is how you are saved. Saved of the second death. Saved of Klippoth. Of the annihilation. Because unfortunately, we are bottled up within the ego. Uh, is, what is enough? enough. Well, I, uh, I have more to say, but you can ask questions. Questions? Yeah? Since we enter like different levels of consciousness, say like the unconscious in the dream state, and even though we practice alchemy and pranayama and in the physical plane, and we fornicate, say, in the dream state, is the same level of uh, sin against the Holy Spirit as you would fornicate in the physical plane? The question is, if we fornicate in dreams, is as... Uh, equal as to fornicate in the physical plane when we are in the body. Because when we are outside of the body, <coughs> sometimes we have wet dreams, right? Well, uh, it's the same, but it's not, uh, how you call, collected in the same way. It's not taken in the same way. Because in the physical plane, of course, you are uh, capable of controlling your physical body. While in dreams, sometimes you don't know even who you are, right? So the law doesn't take that uh, uh, sin in the same level as in the physical plane. That's why many initiates that are tested in the internal planes, Master Samael explains in one of his books, that he was already chased in the physical plane. He was not even looking at women, when he was looking at any woman, he says, he was looking at any woman from the waist up. Not like you, he says. When you look women, because I did that also, you always, the first thing that you see is from waist below. And that's bestiality. That's any cat, any dog, any horse do that. Even smell that, he says. But I, I overcame that. So I was chased. But in the internal planes, my own particular individual Lucifer was testing me. And putting me in a situation when I was with this woman. And in the moment when I was with this woman, ex-ex woman, I forgot who I was. And I was fornicating. When I was awakening, I was desperate. And I was meditating, he says. 
because really I didn't like uh, to eat the forbidden fruit since I was teaching not to do it. And then he says, now I understood, I comprehended my ego, now I'm going to uh, continue ahead. And then he was meditating, and then Lucifer was putting the same test again, and he was falling. Many times. To that level, he says, that he was afraid of even meditating, because he says, I want to go out of my body, and I'm going to fall again. And he was really feeling discouraged with himself. Then the guardian of the temple told him, you know what is the problem with you? Yes, he asked. You forgot about your Aima. You forgot about your divine Shekinah, your divine mother. And then he understood. He invoked his divine mother, and the divine mother assisted him, and took him to the tribunals of karma. And with a negotiation with Anubis, an executioner of that temple took that ego from within him. And really, he says, the ego was uh, emitting that sound that the, the horses do. What is the sound? Nay. It's neighing. When it came out of him. It was a beast, he said, that he created in the Middle Ages. When he was living as Don Juan. And then he understood that in order to be a, a completely help in the past, you, you shouldn't not forget your divine mother. Because she always helps you to comprehend. But sometimes you need to do a lot of good in order to receive that type of help in the tribunals of karma. He received that help because he was, of course, writing books and giving a lot of help. If we want to receive that, we have to do a lot of good. That is when the ego is very deep and is hurting us because we have too many of them. But the law understands that and your own inner Elohim understands that also. That you are doing your efforts. And of course, we have a lot of, we have thousands of ego of lust that do their work, unfortunately, when we are dreaming. So we have to keep ahead and comprehending. Yes, your question? You stated that after annihilating the ego in relation to the 96 laws, we incarnate your Buddha in Hesed. But don't we have to annihilate the ego completely? The ego is in the black moon related to even more laws. The process of the second mountain is only for resurrected, I mean for incarnated masters. You know, only for them. You enter into the second mountain after uh, the incarnation of Geburah and Hesed. Although in that process you are incarnating. You cannot go into the second mountain without Geburah and Hesed inside. Because the one that has to comprehend the black moon, Lilith, which is related with other spheres, very deep, is only Chesed in combination with the Geburah and Tiferet. You know, this is precisely the whole work. Tiferet, Geburah, Chesed, going into hell. This is the mystery of the round table. This is the mystery of Siegfried going down, receiving that Neuma. And only with the Neuma can you enter into the second mountain. This is something that you have to understand. You cannot enter into the second mountain if the Neuma is not incarnated within you. With Tifereth alone, it's not possible. You have to bring it down. And for that, you have to annihilate the eagles of 96, which is Malkut, because the second mountain starts from Yesod above. Do you have another question? Of course, the incarnation of that is a process. It's a process, you know. The incarnation of the Neuma is a process of the second mountain. Little by little, you are incarnating part of Geburah and Gedulah, right? In, in different, until you go into Bina, beyond, the glory end. Right? That's the process of the second mountain. Death incarnation, death incarnation, or ascension, I would say, right? that's the mountain of the resurrection. Yes? Well, there are many, uh, in Nirvana, many masters that did the seven serpents of fire. 
So therefore, they develop their own uh, gedula, love, but they are selfish. In order to elaborate the work or the path of the Bodhisattva, that gedula has to abandon nirvana and become hesed. In other words, mercy, charity, compassion, you know, come down, right? And then you see, when you see gedula in the earth, that's hesed. When somebody says, oh, this is a master of compassion, you are saying that compassion, which is gedula, become hesed, or became hesed now in the body of that master. Before that, it's in the process. You see, you have to understand that this is not like magic. The process of building the human soul is a process until you reach gedula. And after that, the process of building spirit did you hear that the master said that you have also to create spirit? It means that you have to incarnate it here in the physical world and in all your internal body little by little. That's a long process. For meditation, annihilation, it says this. Deny yourself, take your cross, and follow me. That's the whole process. Another question. perfect in his own level, in his own octave. You know, all the plants, all the animals, all the minerals have their own inner gedula <coughs> inside, but not developed. When the master says that the inner being of us is the master, yeah, but in the process, when the initiate receives for the first time the first initiation of major mysteries, the initiations of fire, the first one, when that fire wakes, then, for the first time, that gedula becomes a master. But it's a newborn master in the internal planes, not in the physical plane. In the internal planes. Another master, another monad that enters into the path that leads to nirvana. But finally reaches nirvana is gedula. And he wants to go ahead, has to become hesed. Another question. Can you explain what the first and second coming of Christ is in us? The first is written in Genesis. That fire of Gedula, the Son of God, that has to come and elaborate to create. That's the first coming. Because Christ is fire that helps with Gedula to work to create the internal bodies. That's the first coming. The second coming is the path of the Bodhisattva. When you receive as the Son of Man, the Lord in order to perfect yourself in different levels and to achieve resurrection. That's the second copy. Yes? I have a, um, I want to just talk to you about belief. And um, I'm wondering if you can talk to me about belief. And what you're saying is like, it depends on your belief. I happen to believe that we're all children of God and we all have God within us, period. And it's, it's our free will an intention that we're going to do good, good things or bad. Like you could be doing, you intend to do something good and it turns out to be bad, which I feel that your intention is what matters. Well, in the beginning, yeah, is the intention that but it's in the beginning to have the intention of do good. But if you don't do it, then you remain in that level. Of course, the beginning is to believe, to have the knowledge in your head to know about the path as we are now receiving the doctrine unveiled, clarified for everybody. That's the beginning. If you accept it, good. If you don't practice it in elaborate that we are per, uh, explaining here, very bad. Because then you will remain as a believer. A believer is a just a believer. Anybody can change. That's why, you know, there are people there that are Catholics and suddenly uh, knocking on the door and says we are Jehovah Witnesses and they become Jehovah Witnesses after that. They change belief. When you investigate them, they remain with their own lust, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, and all the defects. They just change belief, but they are the same thing. They don't create anything within. They don't transform themselves. That is what we call metempsychosis, a change in the psyche. If you don't transform your psyche, even if you believe in all the religions of the world, 
That will change you. Nobody changes by believing in anything. You need to, to do. If you want to have a child as a woman, you need a man. But just by believing that you will have a child, the child won't come in your womb. You need a sperm. So in the physical plane as below, so it's above. You have to transmute that element in order to create, in order to be born again, as this is written. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,